Welcome to the new discussions on statistics. For today, we'll have the measures of central tendency. These are the mean, median, and mode. These three measures of central tendency pertains to only one term, and that is average. Each of them, though, has its own definition of average. Since these three terms pertains to only one concept, you cannot use these three in one research or statistical analysis. You have to choose the appropriate measure of central tendency depending on the objective of your research. The general rule here in my class is to round off your answers in nearest hundreds if it's decimal. However, if your answer is whole number, let it be whole number. For the first part of this video, we'll start discussing class the ungrouped data. We begin with mean of ungrouped data. The mean is the most popular and well-known measure of central tendency. It can be used with both discrete and continuous data, although its use is most often with continuous data. The mean is equal to the sum of all the values in the data set in the data set divided by the number of values in the same data. This is the closest to the definition of average. Mean is identified by this formula. Sigma x over n, where sigma x is the sum of all the given data, while n is the sample size. The symbol for the mean is also given below. Let's have this first example. Consider the wages of 10 workers below. They have different wages. To identify the mean of this, find the sum first of the wages of the 10 workers. Using the formula, the sum is 307,000. Divided by the sample size, which is 10, it is 30,700. Therefore, the mean salary of 10 staff is 37,000. More examples. Find the mean of the following. 34, 38, 24, 35, 34, 33. First, get the sum of this. Okay, so the sum of this is 198. Also, there are six sample size. Using the formula, it will be the sum, which is 198, over n, which is 6. So 198 divided by 6 is 33. Number 2. Given the data, of course, you get the sum of the given. You count the sample size. Counting this, we have 8 sample size. Using the formula, the sum is 602,768 divided by the sample size, which is 8. So the mean now of this is 66,974.22. Another, using the data, counting this, we have 10 sample size. Also, getting the sum, it is 939.24. Using the formula, we divide 939.24 by 10. It is now 93.92. So that's how you get the mean of ungrouped data. The median is the middle score for a set of data that has been arranged in order. Suppose we have this data with sample size of 11. First thing we have to do is to arrange this in increasing manner. We all know that the middle part of 11 is 6. With this, the 6th value is already your mean. Therefore, given this data, the median of the given is 56. Another, 8 novels were randomly selected and numbers of pages were recorded. This is already arranged in increasing. In this case, the sample size is even. And if it's even, we simply get the average of the two middle parts by getting the sum and divided by 2. So with this, we all know that the two middle parts are 407 and 415. 
Adding this 2, we have 822. Divided by 2, the median now is 411. So that's how you get class the median, the median of ungrouped data with even sample size. Next, the calories per serving of 11 juices were presented. We all know that the middle part again of 11 is 6. So arranging this, we we'll just get the 6 datum. 32.3 as the first. This is the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Since this is the sixth datum, the median now is 76.20. Mode is the datum or data that is slash r most frequently seen in the data. Example, in physics class, 10 scores were randomly selected and the results were 73, 77, 77, 71, 71, 68, 65, 77, 65, and 66. There's no need for us to arrange this in increasing order in getting mode. All you have to do is to choose the datum that is most frequently seen. In this case, the mode here is 77, since 77 is the value that is most appeared in the given. That's how you identify mode. Another example, nine, encoder, nine encoders were assessed based on their speed words per minute. With this, we can see that we have two modes here, 21 and 43, since they are the ones most seen in the given data set. Another, in a class, 20 scores were randomly selected, and these are the following. With this, the modes are 14 and 15. Last example. Data of a certain study were this. Looking at the data, we have three 100 points. We have three 178s and three 103s. And adding the frequency of this three, that is equal to the sample size, which is nine. In this case, we say that this data set has no mode, since they are equal and the sum of the frequencies is the total sample size. So that's how you get class D mode. You just identify the most frequently seen in the given data set.